So, oh, I'm not there. Well, he's introduced Mark. Mark Doctor, Mark Bateman. He's not a technician at Newclimate. He's actually someone who teaches people. Yes. Like a teacher almost. And you made a pie with some cat wee. Yes, I made a pie with some cat wee. Um, which is incredibly fun. So the QR code up there takes you to a web page that's got this presentation on it and a link to a lot of code. Um, if anybody cares to download and kind of follow along and compile the code and stuff. So we'll talk a little bit about what I do first and then I'll talk about the what I've done with the Wii. So I am a lecturer in computing, I've been teaching CS for computer science since about 2000, mainly to undergraduates and postgraduates as a day job. For fun, I do things like summer schools, where I teach uh, school kids, 15 plus. I've been teaching them things like how to do this. This is a robot tank simulation, where you go and bath each other and blow each other to smithereens. Um, that's actually using an anti-gravity motion system figure out where it should move, which is kind of cool to teach a 15 year old. Um, that stuff is spending random afternoons with six year olds teaching them scratch and teaching them how to make racing games, which is also immensely fun but really hard work. <laughs> so what I've been playing with recently is the Wiimote. So you all know of anything about these things. Yeah? So, Standard your, uh, Bluetooth device. Standard Bluetooth device that you can connect to a computer and play with, which is what I've been doing. So these things have motion sensing for things like tilt, rotation. They also have other buttons. They have uh, a number of LEDs for input, uh, rumble, and then you can connect them up to the nunchuck and get some extra input with a stick. And they also have an infrared camera on the front. And that infrared camera can do four-point motion tracking. <coughs> so you can actually connect up an IR device, such as that, which is just a torch that I've replaced the LED from an actual white light source to an infrared source, which if I push the button, nothing happens, apart from hopefully on the camera, which you can see. So these things are 21 quid as a recommended retail price. Actually, no. That thing, without the nunchuck, is about 21 quid as a recommended retail price. About 10 quid if you go and look for it. Uh, you look for a decent price. I found it as 6 quid on eBay. So, a little bit about Scratch, which is where the cat comes from, by the way. Um, a visual programming language, which looks a bit like that, designed to be used by kids. Uh, advantages for using with kids is it's really easy to learn, removes a lot of the programming errors that you can get, and it's really quick to write games. It also comes <coughs> as a default programming language on the Raspberry Pi, so it's already there to play with. The useful thing it's got for actually getting data in and out of it is this remote sensor connection, which means you can broadcast messages and you can take in sensor information. So, sensor information, such as the Wii. So, on the website that I've had the QR code for, I actually wrote and left a Python module that will actually connect the Wiimote into Scratch. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can actually just map the actions on the Wiimote to key presses. That's pretty dull. It's really easy to set up. There's actually bits of software that will do it for you. But from a programmer's point of view, it's really not as much fun. All you're getting is key presses. With the module I've done, you get a direct connection. So what you get to see is actual sensing information from how the stick has moved, sensing information from where the IR has moved to. So you're actually doing more interesting things with that. So, the, the proxy system I've done takes a direct feed from this remote and punts it straight into Scratch. There is one problem in that the Wiimote is actually too fast for Scratch. It produces too much data. It's got a 100 uh, hertz sample rate, 
which just overwhelms Scratch immediately. And this is overwhelmed not on a Raspberry Pi, this is on my laptop. It overwhelms Scratch. Reduce it down to 20 hertz as a sample rate. Works actually really well. Um, you can do some quite nice things. You can actually get the sticks working quite nicely. You can get the sensing working quite nicely. You can create some games. You're not going to get really high quality out of it. But for kids writing games, it's absolutely great. So this is all that happens. Wiimote's connected by Bluetooth into a, down, into a proxy that down samples and then sends it straight into Scratch. So I'm not going to do the demos because it actually take way too long to boot up and do stuff. But I've got three demos on the web page. So there's one there, one there, one there. So this one is just you push various buttons and the cat does stuff. It actually says things. I need to move the stick on the nunchuck. The cat just moves around. <laughs> this one is a simple bat and ball game. So what we've got is the IR camera <coughs> sensing the position of the infrared LED. And as you move this up and down, the IR camera picks it up and then whoops, the stick moves up and down and the ball gets batted around. Yeah, nice simple game, nice easy game to, to do with kids. And this one is just the simple drawing system. <coughs> so you wave the pen around and it draws on screen for you. Dead simple stuff. Dead fun. <coughs> so what are you can actually use it for? So um, there's actually a lot of work being done on this before about making interactive whiteboards using Wiimotes, which is where I got the inspiration to actually play with this stuff. It's actually a bit boring. Um, there's interactive whiteboards all over schools. I bet kids are going to be that interested in it. But you can actually make any surface interactive. You can make laptop screens interactive things by doing this. Um, slightly more interesting, but probably not massively. The real power for doing this with the infrared camera is object tracking. So you can now track any object in 2D or 3D space um, for about 10 quid on using a Wiimote. Uh, now being tweeted apparently. So with a single LED, you can get a position in 2D space, space with no direction. If you're doing things with two LEDs, three LEDs, depending on how you've organized them, you can map in 2D space with orientation and you can map in 3D space by looking at a distance measurement, which is quite fun. You can also do things like motion capture. You can actually place either an LED, some LEDs on somebody or do something that can reflect infrared light. You can actually capture a position of a person and do a really cheap version of motion capture and you know, record what's going on. Or you can let kids do interactive games. So get taxi games that you can do with a Wii, which you can't do with Scratch at the moment. Or you can't do, well you can't in fact. You can then do with Scratch. <coughs> so, uh, end of my talk, resources. So that's the URL for anybody that doesn't read QR codes. The instructions to make an IR pen, right, that URL. I actually cheated. And what I did is I went to my local Maplins and just bought a kit and ripped an infrared LA, uh, LED out of a broken toy and replaced it. And the stuff that I've been playing with is actually inspired by a PhD that was done in, I think it was 2009, first paper was about 2008. Um, he was looking at folding surfaces and things, not particularly fun for children, but actually still quite cool. <laughs> and that's it. Um, are we going to do questions now, later? Like that's it. Yeah. Right in, in, the, in the, the next jam spreading session. In the next jam spreading session, which starts in like four minutes or something. <laughs> I know, yes. <laughs> so, Martin, thank you very much. Thank you.